relationship management and negotiation skills. So firstly, we will understand the meaning of relationship management and negotiation skills. Relationship management is to create and maintain the contact with the different parties involved in business. Various parties are employees, customer, government, supplier, retailer, etc. To understand the concept, we should know about service chain model. The service profit chain establishes relationships among profitability, customer loyalty, and employee satisfaction, loyalty, and productivity. The service profit chain model is based on the following seven theorems. Profit and growth are linked to customer loyalty. Customer loyalty is linked to customer satisfaction. Customer satisfaction is linked to service value. Service value is linked to employee productivity. Employee productivity is linked to employee loyalty. Employee loyalty is linked to employee satisfaction. Employee satisfaction is linked to internal quality of work life. The limitations of this model are relationship between satisfaction and loyalty is not always linear. The relationship depends on the type of industry. Benefits of a successful customer retention program are it reduces communication costs for customer acquisitions. Loyal customers tend to avoid substitutes and other competition and perform repeat purchases even if the price of the service is more increasing revenue and profit. Repeat customers are less expensive to serve than first-time customers as they are well aware of the offer and do not require customer support, education, guidance and training. There is one more concept, that is, cycle of capability. Measuring and maintaining service quality goes on to reduce variability and increase consistency of service delivery and the total capability of the firm. This has an appreciable and positive impact on employee satisfaction which greatly lowers attrition levels. The higher loyalty factor reduces training costs increasing productivity and the quality of output. The last contributing towards raising the benchmark of performance, the maintenance and upgradation, each of which will reflect on its competitive advantages, positioning, brand value and profitability. After studying this lesson, we should be able to understand the need for retaining customers, discuss the concept of CRM, Analyze the role of customer privacy in CRM. Define banker-customer relationship. Enumerate effective negotiation skills. Now let's discuss customer relationship management. Customer relationship management is broadly recognized, widely implemented strategy for managing and nurturing a company's interactions with customers, clients and sales prospects. It involves using technology to organize, automate and synchronize business processes, principally sales activities, but also those for marketing, customer service and technical support. The overall goals are to find, attract and win new clients, nurture and retain those the company already has, entice former clients back into the fold and reduce the cost of marketing and client servicing. Here is the CRM business cycle as we can see in the diagram. It includes four steps. Understand and differentiate. Develop and customize. Interact and deliver. Acquisition and retaining. Firstly, we need to understand and differentiate the customers. We cannot have a relationship with customers unless we understand them, what they value, what types of service are important to them, how and when they like to interact, and what they want to buy. True understanding is based on a combination of detailed analysis and interaction. Several activities included are understanding demographics, purchase patterns, and channel preference of customers, segmentation to identify logical unique groups of customers, Primary research to capture needs and attitudes. 
At the same time, differentiations should be based on the value customers are expected to deliver. Then, we need to develop and acquire the product as per the requirement of the customers. Most organizations today are not able to cost-effectively customize products for individual customers. However, products, services, channels and media can be customized based on the needs of quantitative customer segments. The extent of customization should be based on the potential value delivered by the customer segment. Then we need to interact with the potential customers and deliver them product. Interaction is also a critical component of a successful CRM initiative. It is important to remember that interaction doesn't just occur through marketing and sales channels and media. Customers interact in many ways with many different areas of the organization including distribution and shipping, customer service and online. After delivering the product to potential customers, we need to acquire and retain the final customer as much as we can. Successful customer retention is based very simply on the organization's ability to constantly deliver on three principles. Maintain interaction, never stop listening, continue to deliver on the customer's definition of value, remember that customers change as they move through differing life stages. Be alert for the changes and be prepared to modify the service and value proposition as they change. And so the cycle continues. We should adopt CRM because of its following benefits which are streamlined sales and marketing processes, higher sales productivity, added cross-selling and upselling, improved service and loyalty and retention, increased call center efficiency, higher close rates, better profiling and targeting, reduced expenses, increased market share, higher overall profitability, marginal costing. Assumptions of CRM model are habitual action, current customer information is always correct, consumers want individual differentiated treatment services, and products. Habitual action says that a basic idea of CRM is that the future behavior of customers is determined by or similar to their previous behavior. In other words, the people will behave as they did yesterday and a month ago. This assumption is partially right and partially wrong. As time goes by, behavior patterns change. Its next assumption is that current customer information is always correct. The customer database comes from a variety of sources and is obtained by different input methods. And thus, the information can be wrong. The basic assumption of CRM is that the customer always wants individualized products and services. However, this assumption cannot always be satisfied because a company cannot deliver all of the required products and services, always. Furthermore, instead of individualization, customer buying decisions for products and services often follow fashion or trends. Technology developments are also important in the decision process. In CRM, we have also to maintain customer privacy. One of the primary functions of these tools is to collect information about clients, thus a company must consider the desire for privacy and data security as well as the legislative and cultural norms. Some clients prefer assurances that their data will not be shared with third parties without their prior consent and that safeguards are in the place to prevent illegal access by... Now let's discuss banker-customer relationship. There are types of banker-customer relationships which are debtor-creditor, trustee beneficiary, agent principal, bailey bailer, lesser lessee. It has a semblance of creditor-debtor relationship. Thus the customer is the creditor who has the right of demand on the money from the banker. As long as the banker is keeping the customer items, the banker is indebted to the customer. 
The banks assume the position of trustee when they accept securities or valuables from the customer for safe custody. The article deposited with the bank for safe custody continues to be owned by the customer. The banker is to deal with the articles as per the instructions of the customer. The banker is a trustee of the customer in respect of checks and bills deposited by the customer for collection till are collected. He becomes the debtor once it is collected and credited to the account of the customers. If the bank is liquidated before the check is realized, the bank remains trustee of the customer. Therefore, the customer can claim back the check or the proceeds of the check in full. Banker also acts as an agent. A banker acts as an agent of his customer and performs a member agency function for the conveyance of his customer. For example, some banks have established tax service departments to take up the tax problems of their customers. The bank functions as a bailey. When it keeps valuable articles, demand gold, sikats and other documents for its customers. The bank works as the custodian of these things and is implied responsibility of the bank to return these things safely. Thus the bank is a bailey and the customer a bailer or beneficiary. On hiring out of locker, bank becomes lesser and the hirer a lessee and the relationship is that of landlord and tenant. The lesser is not responsible for any loss or damage suitable clause to the effect is also incorporated in the lease deed and hirers are advised in their own interest to ensure their valuables deposited in the locker. After this, the discussion comes on negotiation. Negotiation is a dialogue intended to resolve disputes to produce an agreement upon courses of action to bargain for individual or collective advantage or to craft outcomes to satisfy various interests. It is the primary method of alternative dispute resolution. Steps in the negotiation procedure includes Step 1. Complaint recipient Step 2. Delegate reviews the matter Step 3. If appropriate, delegate initiates negotiation Step 4. Decision made by delegate Step 1. Refers matter to delegate. Person receiving the complaint refers the matter to the appropriate delegate as soon as possible. Step 2 is to review the matter. Negotiation is not possible if the complaint is anonymous or requires that the identity not be revealed to the respondent. The complainant should be also advised and if this stance is maintained, the process should be discontinued and papers should be filed securely in case of further developments. Delegate checks. If exclusions apply, if so, refer as necessary. If negotiation is the right procedure and is warranted, if so, process can proceed. If a mediation service might be an appropriate alternative, if so, advise parties and initiate this process. Step 3 is negotiation procedure. For this, the delegate should obtain or, if provided orally, put the complaint in writing. Acknowledge complaint in writing. Notify the respondents within 10 working days. Obtain written response from respondent. Gather information relevant to the complaint to support the resolution process. Arrange negotiation meetings or other communications. Document the outcome and notify all parties in writing. Implement remedy and systems improvement if needed. Step 4 is decision by delegate. In situations where the parties cannot resolve the complaint, the delegate must make a decision. There are two major negotiating approaches. Distributive bargaining. It is an approach in which the goals of one party are in direct conflict with the goals of the other party. Each party wants to maximize its share of the limited resources. Distributive bargaining is a competitive or win-lose approach to negotiations. Integrative negotiation. Under this approach to negotiation, the party's goals are not seen as mutually exclusive. The focus is on making it possible 
for both sides to achieve their objectives. Integrative negotiation focuses on the merits of the issues and is a win-win approach. There is one style of negotiation which is called third-party negotiation. When one party comes to resolve the conflict between two parties by acting impartially, it is called third-party negotiation. Third party can be mediator, arbitrator, consultant, inquisitor. In most cases, a mediator will encourage both parties to focus on the important issues and defer discussion of non-vital parts of the agreement until later in the negotiation process. In the same way, the parties involved are encouraged to focus developing ways in which both parties' core interest can be met. A mediator cannot force an outcome but can be very effective in finding a solution. They do this by helping the parties determine the facts. They show empathy and impartiality with the parties and help generate new ideas. Mediators can also use persuasion to get people to soften hardline positions. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. An arbitrator will allow both parties to tell their side of the story. The arbitrator is a neutral party that has extensive training handling complex business negotiations. The arbitrator will have the power to decide a fair and equitable resolution to the negotiations. This prevents the perception that one side has gotten the better end of the agreement. This will enable the companies to pursue future business opportunities at the conclusion of the negotiation. An arbitrator will often conclude the negotiations more quickly than a mediator can. The best interest for both companies is to conclude the negotiation so that strategic planning can be mapped out and implemented for future enterprises. A consultant is a skilled and impartial third party who attempts to facilitate problem solving through communication and analysis aided by his or her knowledge of conflict management. This approach has a longer term focus to build new and positive perception and attitude between the conflicting parties. The role of an inquisitor involves high control over both the process and the outcome of conflict resolution. An inquisitor asks questions, directs the way evidence is presented, calls for additional evidence and referees arguments, then decides the outcome of the dispute and enforces his or her decision. Now let's study the concept of features of effective negotiation skills. One useful and simple way would be to divide negotiation into two poles. At one pole, consider interpersonal skills personal attitude and approach to negotiation while on the other there should be an understanding of the negotiation process and strategies. There are many training courses that are available in the market created to hone interpersonal skills. A second important principal element is that of preparation. No matter how good a speaker you are, a complex process like negotiation requires solid backup in the form of facts credible information and an appropriate strategy. A third area to consider that leads to inefficient negotiations is the effort of certain negotiators to control the final outcome of the meetings and the decisions and actions of the party they are negotiating with. To succeed in negotiation, focus on the areas that you can control your actions, decisions and emotions. A clear vision of your goals the discipline to back your strategy and the subsequent right decisions that flow from this will definitely make you a better negotiator. Fourth, to become an effective negotiator and to hone your skills, you really do need practice. Negotiation is an applied rather than a theoretical science. So just as you know, would not expect to transform your abilities through the mere reading of books on golf and horse riding. Don't expect similar results from reading negotiation books alone. Consider how best to balance your interpersonal skills with your engagement and awareness of the negotiation process itself. This will make you feel more self-confident at the negotiation table.
Thus, to apply everything in a perfect manner, a negotiator must possess following qualities. Planning skill, ability to think clearly under stress, general practical intelligence, verbal ability, product knowledge, personal integrity, ability to perceive and exploit power. Now let's check your progress for the concept. Relationship management is to create and maintain the contact with the internal parties involved in business. Right or wrong? Wrong. Distributive bargaining is an approach in which the goals of one party are in direct conflict with the goals of other party. Right or wrong? Right. An arbitrator will encourage both parties to focus on the important issues and defer discussion of non-vital parts of the agreement until later in the negotiation process. Right or wrong? Wrong. Let's revise. To achieve CRM, a company-wide set of tools, technologies and procedures promote the relationship with the customer to increase sales. Customer, relationship and management are three components of CRM. CRM business cycle includes the following steps. Acquisition and retaining. Understand and differentiate. Develop and customize. And interact and deliver. Customer privacy is an important issue in CRM. CRM deals with large amounts of customer data through various touch points and communication channels. Many small companies merge in order to sustain and to compete with large vendors. Large companies acquire small vendors to enter their markets. The basic idea is that customers should be judged on their profitability to the firm over the total time they make purchases. Negotiation is the process through which the parties to a conflict define what they are willing to give and accept in an exchange. Negotiation permeates the interactions of almost everyone in groups and organizations. When individuals and groups reach a stalemate and are unable to resolve their difference through direct negotiations, especially when a conflict is emotionally charged, they may turn to a third party to help them find a solution. 